Hi there, welcome to Meet the Leaders. I'm David Smith. Great to have you along with us today and getting uh, all kinds of perspective on what's going on in Hartford these days. As we're about a month or so into the session, still got a long way to go in spite of the fact it is a shortened session. There is a lot of work to be done and we're pleased to have Representative Tom O'Day with us uh, and uh, getting some perspective from him as to how things are going at this point. How have you been? Good, thank you, David, very much, you, yes. You've been very busy. Uh, yep. It is a busy session. Shortened means you've got to do a, as much work as a long session in a shorter period of time. I, uh, I got a new car in January because my old one had almost 100,000 miles after just two years, <laughs> and I've already got 4,500 miles in the car just in a month. So it's been Those busy. frequent driver miles keep adding up, uh, don't they, yeah, though? Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, spe speaking of that, uh, a, a number of things uh, you've been focusing on, one, one of which uh, is the... Uh, the less than gas oriented Tesla automobile that has been a big uh, uh, bone of contention for dealers and, and others uh, who either want to see a Tesla dealerships in here or don't. Maybe you can give a, a short answer on how that's going. Yes, so yesterday we did have a public hearing on uh, Tesla being allowed to sell in Connecticut. Te Tesla is the, the, the electric automobile, it's a high end electric automobile that apparently is having rave reviews and great success in sales around the country. But in Connecticut, it's been stymied. Yeah, so last session there was a bill to allow Tesla to sell uh, in the state of Connecticut. They, they've sold about a thousand vehicles, to, uh, I should say, about a thousand Connecticut residents have bought vehicles in Massachusetts and New York, uh, but they haven't been allowed to buy them in Connecticut. So there was a bill last year that came through, and we got it through the House uh, with a significant majority and it got stuck in the Senate. That would allow? People to sell, to allow Tesla to sell in Connecticut directly to Connecticut residents. Okay. Right now, if you want to buy a Tesla, you have to go to New York or Massachusetts to buy it. Now, there's, there's a service center in Milford for Teslas, um, but there's no place to buy them at this point in time because we have a, a franchise act. So unless you're part of a franchise, you can't sell in the state of Connecticut. Uh, what Tesla wants to do is to bypass that and sell direct. We should say that this, this Franchise Act goes back a few years. Yeah, to the 30s and 40s. The, the, so this about was a 70 or 80 year old Yes, it, 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 act. Was, it was designed to protect in the early stages of the automobile uh, people selling cars so that the manufacturer didn't come in and compete with them and put them out of business. Right. So they have a license or an agreement to, to sell the, that, that brand like a GM in, in, a, in a certain geographic area. Uh, what Tesla wants to do is direct from the manufacturer sell to customers. Um, look, I supported the bill last session. Uh, I anticipate so supporting again. You know, I do have some friends that are dealers. Uh, I got my car from Stanford Ford, and I love my Ford Fusion Hybrid. Uh, but I do believe that we need to uh, allow Tesla to sell in the state of Connecticut. We need to figure out a good compromise so that dealers are protected and don't feel like there's going to be an influx of direct sellers and put them out of business. Uh, and by the same token, allowing customers to purchase Teslas. Well, we, we, sh we should say that Tesla is not uh, your thirty, forty thousand dollar vehicle. It, it is a higher end vehicle at this point, anyway. So that if you're selling uh, hybrids uh, at uh, Stanford Ford or wherever, it's not a direct competitive situation, really. Correct. Although Tesla anticipates coming out with a $35,000 model within the next year and a half. That's why I kind of hedged my introduction yes. to that uh, so, uh, at this point. So what we were questioning the <clears throat> Tesla executives about was what volume would they see uh, their car sales at, at which point in time it would be uh, appropriate for them to go to the franchise model. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't give us a number, uh, so we don't know when that's going to happen. Um, but we're trying to th think of ways to protect the dealers and allow customers to purchase directly uh, the, the Tesla vehicle because it is an amazing car. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you coming up with uh, suitable protections? Are you are you getting a feel that there, there are such things? That yesterday, can be done? yesterday was the first hearing, public hearing on it. We heard from a lot of dealers and we heard from cust uh, Tesla executives, and we're going to meet with them and see what some of the proposals are to compromise between the two. Uh, look. Obviously, we want to have those thousand purchases in the state of Connecticut because it means Connecticut jobs and Connecticut taxes. Uh, now, do we, if, if a Connecticut resident does buy from uh, Massachusetts, we still do get the tax revenue. But the point is, we want those jobs in Connecticut. So uh, I think we will find a compromise. Uh, I'm hopeful, 
and uh, maybe by this time next year, people will be buying Teslas directly in uh, Connecticut. Watch this space for more, and we'll have it. Um, the budget is, 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 uh, is an area that uh, just gets more hair-raising all the time. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't get more money-raising all the time. Uh, we are seeing huge deficits again going to the end of this budgetary session and then colossal ones following hard on the heels of that. Are we going to be able to, to rectify the situation without uh, cutting everything that the state does for all of the citizenry? So the short answer is we're going to need a lot of cuts. Um, and, you know, when I first ran four years ago, I called for a 10 percent cut in all spending across the board because of what was going on with the, what the projections were. And sure enough, now the projections are we're, we're 10 percent deficits going forward in the next two, two years. I mean, literally two and a half billion a year. And had it been four years ago and you'd done this, well, that's another story. And we just saw it. There was just on the capital report today that two more billionaires are moving from Greenwich to, uh, to Florida. So. Look, the good news is I think there's consensus in Hartford that we're overtaxed and it, we've got a spending problem. And so uh, I'm confident you're not going to see a huge increase in taxes. You're not going to see any taxes. You're going to see a cut in spending. Now, what I've been trying to promote is a cut in uh, taxes will actually, you'll see an uptick in revenue because more people will be coming in, more businesses, you'll spur the economy. How rapidly will we see that, though, Tom? That well, takes time. It does take time. And I will say there was an article in the Wall Street Journal recently about North Carolina. North Carolina did three simple things. They cut the corporate tax rate to the lowest of all the surrounding states. They cut their personal income tax to the lowest of the surrounding states. That kept people and businesses saying, let's go to Connecticut, let's, let's, or let's go to North Carolina in that sense. Um, and then they cut the, the benefits for unemployed, uh, the non-working, to just below what they would make if it was minimum wage. Now, in Connecticut, we've just upped the minimum wage. So it's going to be $10 an hour come uh, next January, I believe. And so I, I think if, there's an, if you encourage those that are able to work to work and get them off a, a public assistance, and if you cut the surrounding taxes for uh, employers, uh, corporate taxes, and the personal income taxes so that people aren't encouraged to leave. Literally, I have friends, David, who are telling me, Tom, Connecticut is offering me $4 million a year in savings in my taxes for me and my, my company if I move. It's an incentive to move. And so mm -hmm. we need to stop that. We need to have an incentive to stay in the right. state of Connecticut financially. Because right now, we're, we've never had a more mobile economy. Um, and we need to give them an incentive to stay in Connecticut, not move. Well, one, of the, uh, one of the areas that, that uh, state is always looking at is increasing gambling revenues. And people keep talking about legalizing marijuana. And this, uh, you know, Colorado and Oregon and so forth. This is the, the uh, golden fleece, if you will. So I will admit my position has, I've never been in favor of legalizing marijuana. Uh, I was in favor in somewhat decriminalizing it to an extent, uh, at least those that are using. Get them out of the prison system and, and get them the treatment they need. The problem we're seeing in Colorado, and, and I'm just to be clear, I'm adamantly opposed to the legalizing recreational use of marijuana adamantly opposed to it. And we just had a, a regulation review, our, I'm on the regulation review committee, and we just reviewed the palliative marijuana, and uh, that's for medical purposes. Medical marijuana. Exactly. And expanding the use to basically six new areas. And the problem we have, and just the, just, so just the medical marijuana, we set up two years ago a board, the Board of Physicians, to look at uh, what areas medical marijuana could be used to treat, you know, certain diseases. And, you know, you know cancer treatment, uh, certain epilepsy, uh, seizures, disorders. So, um, and the medical experts said, okay, certain forms of the medical marijuana would be appropriate for certain diseases, limited number of, of, of diseases. And what happened this past week, a week and a half ago, they tried to expand it. The, the commissioner of uh, Department of Public uh, Safety, uh, not public safety, uh, consumer protection came in and testified before us about expanding it to a number of new diseases. The problem is we only have four doctors that are experts in the field of palliative marijuana on the board out of the eight that were supposed to be there. Hmm. The legislation wanted eight, so they have a consensus of those eight right. before we expand it. And so my problem is we shouldn't expand it until we have a full complement of doctors who are experts. And why haven't we got eight? They can't find qualified candidates 
in medical marijuana uh, that are doctors. So before we start expanding it, my position is let's, let's wait and get the full staff on the Board of Physicians to get a consensus on where, what, what disease is medical marijuana. Are you marijuana getting any kind of a consensus from these four? Yes. Uh, no, well, on some of them. I mean, there's, there was oh. a two-to-two -two decision on Fabry disease. And the commissioner had recommended for approving it for that. It's a basically a, a, a genetic disorder. And because the doctors were split 2-2 two -two as to whether or not we should, we were able to eliminate that off of the expanded medical marijuana list of diseases. Uh, what I will tell you is, what I've learned through this process is, uh, marijuana has two main components in it. THC that gets people high, and it has the CBD, which is the, um, the anti-anxiety type component of marijuana, and the medical component the CBC, CBD. Now, the THC, when, you know, the 70s and 80s, when some people were experimenting our age, I was not one of them, but uh, it had a THC content of 1, 2, 3 percent. What you're seeing now in today's uh, the marijuana that's being sold uh, legally and illegally, a 10, 11 percent THC Ooh. content. Oh. So that's why you're seeing people going to the hospital because they don't realize what's, what, what yeah. the concentration yeah. of this THC. So what I'd like to see is that the THC eliminated, and there's no smoking of medical marijuana. It shouldn't right. be. Right now, we do allow it for adults. And there's some movement to allow children to use it in oil form, patch form, eye drops. And you know what? As long as it's not smoked, if it's an oil or you know, uh, an eye drop and it has no THC, which is this, the psychotropic uh, effect, uh, I'm amenable to it if the doctors recommend it and there's a consensus. Uh, but at this point in time, I don't think anybody should be smoking marijuana for medical purposes. Got a ways to go on this whole medical uh, marijuana thing until you get those four other doctors in place. Um, quickly, as, as we're running out of time, uh, DMV has been uh, a real problem area for a substantial length of time. New commissioner in there. How are you feeling about that? I, I like him. Um, and I think, you know, the, the former commissioner, Commissioner Ayala, was a, a good man as well. I, I, uh, I think he had a perfect storm of problems at DMV. They, they were implementing a new computer system, rolling it out, that had been in the works for a number of times. 3M, um, who's been the installer of the computer system, um, there have been some problems with it. And so on top of that, we passed legislation a couple years ago to allow undocumented immigrants uh, to have drive-only licenses. And I was opposed to that legislation when it first came out. Uh, I'm still opposed to it, but I was part of a group that tried to fix it uh, as far as how, what documentation needed to get the driver's own, so, uh, the driver only license. What's happened in Connecticut, they thought they were going to have 12 to 18,000 uh, DO licenses. They've had 75,000. Oh my gosh. So that combination. That combination with the computer problems has been a disaster. So the new commissioner is amenable to talking to uh, AAA to expand. Right now, you can go to AAA for your renewal of your license. And so we want to expand that to allow them to do registration and more things so that less people have to go to DMV. And one of the things we're finding out what people should do is go to the website. Before you go to DMV, go to the website, check on wait times, and see the status of your registration. Because if you have any unpaid taxes, you need to go pay them That's first. That's a major problem. That is yeah. a major problem. So we were talking about this in a hearing the other day. I'm ranking member for transportation, and we had the DMV commissioner in and some uh, DMV personnel. And so we need people to know to go on to online and check that before they go to the DMV. Representative Tom O'Day, it's always good to see you. We thank you very much for your, uh, your good efforts, and uh, we'll look forward to touching base with you as the session goes on. Pleasure. Thank, thank, thank you, you very, very much, much, David. And that's Appreciate all the time we've got for this edition of Meet the Leaders. I'm David Smith. The Cable Visions Meet the Leaders. We'll see you next time.